propre, il n'y a rien. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest, the greatest, a reader-friendly edition of Nick's Nonfiction here with your host, Nick Muniz. This is a certified hood classic. Today we're talking Artie Schopenhauer, Arthur Slop on My Nobbenhauer, his bestseller, The World as Will. Life is Roblox. Philosophical, bruh, life is Roblox. It is difficult to find happiness within oneself but it is impossible to find happiness anywhere else. The person who writes for fools is always sure of having a large audience. We forfeit three-fourths of ourselves in order to be like other people. Damn, son. We're gonna get silly, I'll do the bonus section afterwards, but if you're a reader, this book goes so hard. The final chapter is all about good tips for reading. He's got six good tips. This entire book, though, it's a stream of post-Kantian thought. So he kind of says you have to read Kant if you want to be able to understand this stuff. And I'm going to put it as simple as possible. But just know we're getting into some transcendentalism, some metaphysics today. I'm not going full Zoomer postmodern on you. Well, 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 2 plus 2 equals 5. Absolutely not. Schopenhauer's main assertion is self-empowering. They call him a pessimist, but he's here to say thoughts shape reality. Or reality will shape your, your thoughts if you let it. Quote, mostly it is loss which teaches us about the worth of things. Ooh. He's getting Taoist on us. Man, like not having things, dude. That's how we learn about things, by not having them. This guy takes big swings. What time do philosophers like to visit the mall? The shopping hour. About the author, Arthur Sloppenheimer. He was born in Gdansk, Poland, moving to Hamburg at the age of five. His parents took him around Europe at 15. They said you could either study for university or keep traveling, so he becomes a merchant. His dad dives, leaves him with a monthly stipend, twice the salary of a professor. It's a big dive. He goes back to school, joined the theater, started going to parties, and then he got kicked out of university for writing a satirical poem about the schoolmaster. His mom was pissed at him. He takes the sister, moves out to the country. And Sloppenheimer, he didn't get famous until after he died, so his mom and him beefed their entire life. Adi, why can't you just write like the other authors? 
it's a really good backstory too if you want to go look into that saying he wrote this before he was 30 and then he revised the whole thing when he died that's basically what i did i wrote my book it theory when i was 26 i put my entire treatise out there now i'm just gonna have fun with it you know what i'm saying bro we're not teaching any but i'm not giving up it's just that i think humor is a more universal language than trying to teach a motherfucker metaphysics in 40 minutes <laughs> so yeah we're gonna lose a lot in translation but at least we're having fun with it and as for Artho, Artie, you're going to learn about him today. He says, as man can be himself only as long as he is alone. And if he does not love solitude, he will not love freedom. For it is only when he is alone that he is really free. Get used to the silence. Maybe we do some chin scratchers today. And I got to fill the whole hour, so definitely. Stay tuned. This, the reading chapter is going to blow your mind. And I'm not even going anywhere in between the things. Yeah. Chapter 1. The Will, The World as Will and Representation. Epistemology. Mm, philosophically speaking, Schopenhauer believes the phenomenal world is a product of blind nominal will. So the easiest way to say it, he's basically a simulation theorist. And again, it's not the technological sense that Elon Musk is selling you. Well, you're just on the outside of a video game, dude. He's trying to say that we live in a metaphysical, ethical system, so you can't just go around killing people like they're GTA characters. There's ethics here. But he's one of the first guys to mix in Indian philosophy, aestheticism, denial of self, world as appearance. This is what Elon Musk is calling simulation, but the Indians for thousands of years, they've called it Maya there's different levels to the maya you guys definitely know that shit and i try to get everybody on the highest level as possible getting into epistemology which are methods validity scope the first method he says is to understand kant that's where i'm going if you haven't made it to the critique of pure reason then you're still stuck in realism well, everything is according to two plus two but sometimes your assertions are wrong and again, I don't want to sound too technical. I'm going to use some movies. Like the best way I've seen it portrayed is I did in the Nietzsche book, The Moral Compass of Chet Captain Jack Sparrow. Go back and listen. It was a fucking good one. You remember that scene in Pirates when Davy Jones tells Captain Jack, you better start believing in ghost stories. <laughs> you get to a certain point in philosophy that, bro, this shit is outside the bounds of reality. Just keep on stuff. What do they call it? Quantum physics. <laughs> Once you get to a high enough level in any domain, the symbol sets turn into esoteric rather than exoteric. So let me try to dumb that down again. You ever see fucking Matilda? It's my favorite book ever. I'm trying to bring this to the readers today. This relates to, um, you know, the scene from Matilda when she forces the kid to eat the cake. Schopenhauer, he tries to say that eating isn't good. So what's really good is the suffering of hunger. Because if you didn't have that suffering, it wouldn't make the food taste good. So remember when Miss Trunchbull, the Skinnerian character, she makes the kid stuff his face with the cake? At first, the cake tastes good. He's housing that thing. And then once he quells his hunger pangs, it tastes gross. So I'm not saying good is bad, man. But everything is intertwined. There is no good unless you had the ability to perceive bad. And then finally, in that thing, he's starting to get too full. And Matilda's the first one to stand up. You could do it! And then the woe of the students, their pain for Miss Trunsbold, he's able to take that pain and transmute it. Bro, that movie's a fucking masterpiece. Danny DeVito. This is all Nietzschean as well. You should probably read some Hume as well before you get to Schloppenheimer. <laughs> Matilda, bro. It's all about transmuting emotions. This is alchemy. And we haven't even started the will yet. So Schopenhauer goes deep. He's going, why are we here? Maybe it is to suffer because the good isn't good without the bad. So the eternal soul... Like I'm saying, he's not a realist. He believes in a creator or God. There's probably part of you that's outside of here, whether you call it nirvana or whatever it is. If you're in heaven, 
you would drool for a little bit of pain. Like, I don't want to go to heaven, bro, just hedonisming out for thousands of years. Fuck that, I want a little pain in this bitch. Just think about it, bro. Just fucking sit and think about it. Nothing is good without the opposite side. So I'm saying, don't go full Mrs. Trunchbull, then you always have to be working out. You don't go full Mrs. Honey, the teacher in Matilda. Bro, one of my favorite things about Matilda is when they, they have to cover up the classroom when Miss Trunchbull comes around. <laughs> and one of the signs they pull down, it says, "If It's not learning if you're having fun. It's not learning if you're having fun. You have to dress up like Andrew Booberman and have a monotone voice. That's the only way you can learn. We're learning out here, people. Quote, we're getting into the will and representation. The world is my idea. This is a truth which holds a good for everything that lives and knows, though man alone can bring it into reflective and abstract conscious. If he really does this, he has attained philosophical wisdom. So that's what I'm saying. Think of it as alchemy. You got to turn your pain into pleasure. If you can't do it for yourself, you got to do it for other people. So yeah, you could not read 500 pages now. The world is my idea. That's 500 pages in five words. And again, you're going to lose a ton in translation. But it's not just self-help. That's what a lot of the surface level listeners are going to say. He says, It then becomes clear and certain to him that what he knows is not a sun and an earth, but only an eye that sees a sun and a hand that feels an earth. Like literally, it's not him just saying help yourself. Literally, you compart your vision onto the world and then the ether reflects it back into your reality tunnel. Again, you got to go fucking super deep with this guy. Metaphysics, get to know it. Quote, he's talking about uh, the oldest philosophical question. If a tree falls in the forest, do you really hear it? So we got to define our terms. What is a sound? Vibrations that travel through the air of another medium and can be heard when they reach a person or animal's ear. So a sound is something that reaches a personal or animal's ear. Technically, it doesn't make a sound if it's not there. And I don't love that logic, but at the highest sense, it's true. Like, the Greeks believed in the world of the forms. So literally, they're like, yeah, if I'm not looking at that triangle, it doesn't exist. <laughs> we'll try to go deeper with it. No truth, therefore, is more certain, more independent of all others, and less in need of proof than this. That all exists for knowledge, and therefore this world is only object in re relation to subject, perception of a perceiver in a world of ideas. I don't know. I'm, it, it sounds so bad. Like It's like saying, so Nick, when you're not looking at a cloud, then it just doesn't exist. What he's saying, it's you got to follow the train of logic. Well, 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 the cloud comes from water vapor. Well, 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 water vapor comes from puddles. And then you could have a debate with a scientist that they'll do the mouse who ate the cookie debate all fucking day. The brass tacks of philosophy, this is huge. You either believe in realism or a creator. So that's the realism part, that there is always the cloud, because scientifically... <laughs> Guys, I've read the Sean Harrell, the Stephen Hawking. It's called realism because everything can be traced back to the Big Bang. So they have an answer for everything. Oh, you wonder why there's clouds? Because of the Big Bang. Stop thinking about it. Go back to sleep. Everything there ever was, was one mass, and then it exploded, creating entropy for the last 14 billion years. So you never have to ask any questions again. And I'm saying, you're allowed to believe whatever the fuck you want. It's just if you go non-material, there are much more intricate questions than you can ask. Otherwise, you're always deferring to the Big Fucking Bang. Which again... Entropy and evolution contradict. You can't go too deep into that without getting censored. But I'm just saying, the only miracle scientism is allowed to believe in is the Big Bang. <laughs> One miracle only. Chapter 2. Ontology. Ontology, it's the branch of metaphysics dealing with the nature of being. So like that first book, he was talking about objects, cause and effect. Now he's talking about the relationship between cause and effect. 
And we're going to switch over to five minute book mode here because I'm saying I don't think it helps to dumb this stuff down. If you're interested at this point, this book is going to open your mind. Definitely check it out. So yeah, for 2024, we're probably going to turn up the bullshit dial. <laughs> Speaking of which, oh no, I'm losing connection. No, I'll never stop trying to put, get all of our IQs higher and all that shit. He says, the perfect hand only exists in art. Yeah, because in real life, there's no perfect hand. The Vitruvian man does not exist. What do we got to learn Leonardo da Vinci now to? It's more like aesthetics and stuff. That's book three. I'm trying to some, see something we could go in on. Schopenhauer argues that will is the Kantian thing in itself, the essence underlying all things and phenomena. So, like, he spent an entire book ripping Kant a new asshole. So, even though he learned a lot from the guy, he's refuting a ton of his stuff. This isn't some, like, cult of knowledge. You can learn it yourself, too. But it's going to take you 30 hours of research. And you also have to read Hume and Kant and Nietzsche first, too. I don't know how to help you. So, like, you saying I'm copping out here, I don't know if anybody's thinking that. It's a language. Like, I can't teach you philosophy in 40 minutes. It's an entire language. J just teach me the truth in one sentence. Teach me advanced algebra in one sentence. Doesn't work like that. <laughs> It's all about the fucking contemplations, man. <whistles> Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. That episode holds up. I'm going to have to try to top it this January. But yeah, there's no way to simplify this work without sounding like a cheap palm reader. Just know when you hear the news saying metaphysics, that's new age. Yeah, new age, Plato, Aristotle, Parmenides, Democrates, Descartes. Those guys are such new age. Anything that's too hippie, Plato would have been considered a hippie today. They just push it to the side. Yeah, that's New Age. Forget about it. Book three, aesthetics. That's how smart our ontology is today. It doesn't compart with our knowledge. Fuck it. That's New Age. Jet, book three, aesthetics. He's going aesthetic contemplation. Hmm, what is beauty? You could simplify this with the Soren Kierkegaard, either or. You got an x-axis. On the left side is aesthetic, and on the right side is the traditional. So you got, like, the bachelors versus the houses. So what is beauty? Can you find it on both sides of the spectrum? Schopenhauer, unlike Soren, he admits that there is an ideal to aesthetic. So, like, of course there's a perfect house with a perfect lawn and a perfect family, but is there a perfect artist? And Schopenhauer's brave enough to go, yes, there is a perfect artist. And again, some people think the Denisians, the fucking Lizard King, what's that guy's name? The Doors, you're supposed to roll around on stage. Is that really art, or is that just the CIA being hippie culture? I don't know, you're gonna have to read into that shit. His dad orchestrated the Gulf of Tonkin. <laughs> Yeah, he's saying that, like, actual Leonardo da Vinci art, you have to be chaste to be able to produce that good of a thing. So just like it's hard to be a parent, if you want to be a true artist, it's not fun. It's miserable on both ends of the spectrum. So one of his big ideas of the aesthetic is the only way to minimize pain is to not strive for one or the other extremes, the ideals. So that's why they call him a pessimist, because he's saying we shouldn't be ideal. But what the news won't tell you is that if you want to be ideal, you're going to be an, a miserable person. You have to become an ubermensch. So you have all the fucking ideas tied together. He had a good point here, that the only way out of that spectrum, too, is the sublimeness of nature. So yes, he gets a little transcendental on us. We got a quote here, does beauty have value? During the aesthetic experience, we gain momentary relief from the pain that accompanies our striving. So he's one of these guys who's saying society should strive to have the highest level of art because you have to accommodate the working class as well. 
and instead we're being fed 20 straight years of American Idol. <laughs> if we should try to perfect both ends of the spectrum, you get it. Thus, music is as immediate an objectification and a copy of the whole's will as the world itself indeed as the ideas are. The multiplied phenomena of which constitutes the world of individual things. Therefore, music is by no means like the other arts, namely a copy of the ideas, but a copy of the will itself, the objectivity of which are the ideas. For this reason, the effect of music is so much more powerful and penetrating than it is that of the other arts. For these others speak only of the shadow, but of music and essence. Jimi Hendrix is greater than The Doors. That was pretty wild. So I'm saying you just need both ends of the spectrum. That's his point on aesthetic. So every time you hear a boomer call somebody a lazy hippie, we get to delete one of their favorite songs off their iPhone. You got to have both sides to have a functioning society. There you go. 2023 simplification of Sloppenhauer. Going to chapter four, the final one, quotes. That's when he starts talking about books and she, my favorite topic. A couple potpourri quotes off the top. What a man contributes... Yeah, what a man contributes much more to is his happiness. Okay, we're going from the top. <laughs> what a man is contributes much more to his happiness than what he has or how he is regarded by others. So what you are, your character, is more important than how other people treat you or the things that you have. If that makes sense. It's all about the inner verse rather than the outer of your space telling someone to get a job or get a hotter girlfriend we know these things don't make people happy because then you're on the chase of the next thing and the next thing personal growth that's the real happiness another quote you know how hitler was a vegetarian he says he got a lot of his animal activist ideas from schopenhauer the assumption that animals are without rights and the illusion that our treatment of them has no moral significance is a positively outrageous example of Western crudity and barbarity. Universal compassion is the only guarantee of morality. Schopenhauer, he said he had that realization when he was walking his poodle. He saw a bird was feeding the baby bird a worm, and he's going, damn, all of the pain in nature outweighs the pleasure. Think about all the animals that have to die for you to have one meal. And I'm not going vegan on you. Vegans, do you know how many fucking insects you have to kill to get an acre of corn? You have to have death to have life. So he's going a bigger picture. What's with all the suffering? Is this why Jesus was yapping about being a shepherd to the animals? Where we can steal their meat. <laughs> Schloppenhalmer. He's a bigger nationalist than Hitler. Or less of a nationalist, obviously. Every miserable fool who has nothing at all which he can be proud of adopts at last resource pride in the nation to which he belongs. He is ready and happy to defend all of its faults and follies tooth and nail, thus reimbursing himself with his own inferiority. Get a life. <laughs> this is going to sound nihilistic. It's pure rationalism. What disturbs and depresses young people is the hunt for happiness on the firm assumption that it must be met with in life. So you know how kids say the number one thing they want to be today is a YouTuber? Hey, it ain't going to make you happy, kids. <laughs> From this arises constantly diluted hope and also dissatisfaction. Deceptive images of vague happiness hover before us in our dreams, and we search in vain for their original. Much would have been gained if, though timely advice and instruction... Young people could have eradicated from their minds the erroneous notion that the world has a great deal to offer them. Stop blowing smoke up the kids' asses. <laughs> you can't be a YouTuber unless you're ready to shill. Another quote. What do we got here? What do we got here? Let's get into the reading quotes now. I'm going to sip my water. Oh. You see, the water was good because I was thirsty, not because of the sensation of drinking water. Well, yes, yes. When we read, another person thinks for us. We merely repeat his mental process. 
So it comes about that if anyone spends almost the whole day in reading and by way of relaxation devotes the intervals to some thoughtless pastime, he gradually loses the capacity for thinking, just as the man who always rides at last forgets how to walk. This is the case with many learned persons. They have read themselves stupid. Boom! So this is why I'm always saying don't believe everything you read. Some of his other tips, think about what you read. So you can't just go to the next book and the next book. You got to have time. Read primary texts. Find your sources. He says focus on the classics. Read good books twice. And he has this great quote, bad books are poison. There was no context to that soundboard. But yeah, I've read a ton of bad books. I try not to do bad books anymore. But if we're just going to go comedy version 2024, there's going to be some bad books. Buying books would be a good thing if one could also buy the time to read them. But as a rule, the purchase of books is mistaken for the appropriation of their contents. Uh, we don't got long, motherfuckers. Only read good books. The art of not reading is a very important one. It consists in not taking an interest in whatever may be engaging the attention of the general public at any particular time. When some political or classical pamphlet or novel or poem is making a great commotion, you should remember that he who writes for fools always finds a large public. A precondition for reading good books is to not read bad ones, for life is too short. Damn, son. So Nick, you should read uh, Michelle Obama's book because you're becoming radicalized. No, I shouldn't. Big Mike, you could fuck right off. Some one-liners. Hope is the confusion of the desire for a thing with its probability. Life swings like a pendulum backwards and forwards between pain and boredom. Life is Roblox. Life is Roblox. We got one more quote on the day. Without books, the development of civilization would have been impossible. They are the engines of change, windows of the world, lighthouses, as the poet said, erected in the sea of time. They are companions, teachers, magicians, bankers of the treasures of the mind. Books are humanity in spirit. There you guys have it. The World as Will and Representation by Arthur Schopenhauer. That one's for all my readers out there. Where are my Matildas at? I love you guys very much. I'm putting as much effort as I can into these shows in one week time period. Let's keep on learning. Let's keep on laughing. Nick Munez. We'll be right back with the bonus. Piggy peace.
Throwing a dipski. Dippity do not dippity day. What do we got here? The grizzly. I had a dream I was being eaten by a grizzly recently. You ever have one of those dreams where you're screaming in the dream and it feels like you're trying to wake up in real life? We just talked about the art of dreaming in that other book. It's harder to spot your hands in your dreams when you're in a stressful period. If we got any lucid dreamers out there, share your tips. Those Toltecs also say to take a totem into your dreams, so something that you know that you're dreaming. Anywho, the news. A rare spotless giraffe was born in a Tennessee zoo. Uh, it looks like a, uh, a cow. It doesn't have any spots. That's a strange animal. Arthur Schopenhauer would like to see you put a giraffe into a meat grinder. Its neck would be the last thing to go. It would be alive for so long while you're grinding it. <laughs> for those of you who are new to the program, this is what we like to call vomity. Vomity. Slub it down. Play some dumbass soundboards. Next news story. Monster hunters are conducting the large search of Loch Ness in more than 50 years. The largest search. I usually sparse through the news stories before to try to have a subtext going through, but this is just totally random today. Monster hunters looking for Loch Ness. Researchers and monster hunters are gathering in the United Kingdom's Scottish Highlands this weekend to look for eternally elusive Loch Ness Monster, the biggest search for the legendary beast in more than 50 years. I almost just fell. There's a fart for you. So yeah, these motherfuckers are looking for Loch Ness. Nessie. She's been a legend for 1,500 years. Our purpose is to observe, record, and study the natural behavior of the lock phenomena. Don't you guys have, like, LIDAR? Can't you figure out in one day with undersea radar tech if Nessie is alive? Okay, investigators are breaking out all sorts of technology, including surveying equipment. Uh, what else do we got? Infrared cameras, drones, hydrophones. I wonder if you could call Nessie on the, the telephone. Interesting. So obviously they're not going to find anything. And then they're going to try to group this into those tinfoil hatters. They're still looking for Nessie. Is that what's going on here? 
we got to separate truth from conspiracy because at this point i mean since the warren report there's been two different things but let's not go too deep with this section people are freaking out over a question mark seen in space scientists can explain it it's probably the big bang honestly moving on hank the tank the bear behind 21 home invasions has been captured near lake tahoe a hoe there's something there tahoe <laughs> shimone stop be stuck in something a large black bear who is believed to be a notorious bandit and a hungry uninvited house guest was apprehended by wildlife biologies on friday <laughs> we need that to be a regular soundboard <laughs> i've heard of hank the tank before this is the most famous bear in history February 2022, after they reported that one single event, male bears have been causing 152 reports. Damn, Lake Tahoe is getting ravaged. I would set up like a booby trap bear spray. When the DoorDash guy comes, he gets hit in the face with booby trap. I stuttered. Stuttered on my lip. The agent typically in euthanizes so-called conflict bears due to significant risk they pose to the community. No, no. But bear 64F is no ordinary conflict bear. No. The new Harambe, Hank the Tank. Fuck. If they euthanize this bear, I'm going McVeigh on him. <laughs> what do we got? The CDFW cited widespread interest in Bear 64F as the reason it intends to relocate her to Colorado. Oh, okay, that'll solve the problem. Just drop it in another state. It's probably skiing Bear at Lake Tahoe. Give him to Governor Jared Polis. He'll he'll take care of Hank. <laughs> Let's see. Now they're actually going to put him in a sanctuary. Yo, in Colorado... I went to the biggest animal sanctuary, they said, in the country. They had a two-mile high-rise, so you're like 30 feet off the ground, and you're walking over lions. There were lions as far as the eye can see. I'm not even kidding. Look this place up. I love big cats. That shit blew my mind. I remember they had a white tiger. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Anywho. Hank the Tank, I send my regards. Hopefully they don't catch you. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Carly Russell says she lied about seeing a lost child and being abducted. Who the hell is this? Don't you hate this? The news, they always, they try to make fake famous people. Carly Russell? I've never heard of this person. Dylan McDermott and Dermot Mulroney? Who the fuck are these people? You can't just keep making famous people. <laughs> They had one Hulu show, so Carly Russell is famous now. And that's how fucking desperate these people are for fame. Now Carly Russell is saying she got abducted by aliens. <laughs> Venom. Carly Russell is the new Venom. <laughs> Bro, that's how cheap fame has become. It doesn't... I'm trying to get money off of this program. Fame? Who the hell cares about that? And obviously I'm trying to educate people, otherwise I would just act like a this for every hour every week. Anywho. An otter turned outlaw continues to evade wildlife officials in Santa Cruz. I love the animal stories. Let's see what's up with this otter. <laughs> they got a picture of him. Bandit otter. Otter on the run. Otter on the run. <laughs> An otter in California is on the run from local and federal authorities. He's a fugitive. <laughs> Wanted for aggressively confronting locals. <laughs> he steals surfboards. Yo, this guy's my hero. <laughs> I had my court case, too. I have another case coming up in uh, spring. But yeah, send me those good vibes. I'm not trying to do 20 years in the pen. So what, do I go full-on truth before I get slapped in the slammer? <laughs> 
The five-year-old female otter, known as Otter 841, has been deemed a public safety risk. Euthanize it! Her usually aggressive behavior along the Santa Cruz coast as a result of wildlife, they're trying to put her at a zoo. Somebody just needs to smack this otter. You're not more powerful than humans. What are we doing? Otter 8462? The outlaw? <laughs> Here's what the zoologist said. I don't have all the facts and history of the incidents, but it just seems to me to be another example of humans feeling that they have the right of way on Earth, and that other contemporary species and their rights and their native habitats are expendable. Interesting. Jesse, we need to cook. These otters keep doing meth. We need more Smurfs at Walgreens getting us peroxide. <laughs> Otters on meth. We're having fun. All right, new story. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Whatever happened to the runaway goats of San Francisco? Now they're just feeding me animal stories. How scientists engineered a see-through squid with its brain in plain view. That doesn't make sense. Jellyfish don't have brains. How can we call them living things? Plants, they communicate through their roots. They've done studies where, you know that game Mafia everybody's playing and making YouTube videos about? You have to, everybody gets a role and you have to find out who the killer is. They did this game with plants and the plants on an electrograph gave off more vibes when there was the plant murderer in the room. Jellyfish? They're alive. Plants, they're alive. Hank the Tank, alive. Otter Outlaw, alive. But nah, we have the right of way. Whatever happened to the brothers who save birds whose wings are cut by kite strings? Whatever happened to the brothers who saved the birds? <laughs> I think I'm on AP News right now. They're algorithmizing me. Do we have an algorithm sound effect? Sorting, sorting, give him more animal stories, distract him forever. A 25-year-old from a small town leads North Carolina's Democratic Party towards 2024. Good, 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 good. North Carolina. <laughs> they say, uh, I think it's, uh, what's that fucking town called? I don't know, it's a big bachelorette party town, but it also has the highest human trafficking in America. And now in control of North Carolina is a 25-year-old chick. You should see the picture. She's a smoke show. I wonder if she slept with anyone to get that position. If you were a 25-year-old dude trying to get into politics, there's like a Marine, an ex... He was front lines. People drink with him at bars. He talks about killing people. Now he's running for state, whatever it's called, Congress. This motherfucker's getting zero light. But this hot 25-year-old in North Carolina... Top of the pops in politics. Moving on. Chinese construction workers accused of plowing a hole through the Great Wall. <laughs> that was a real fart. Um, let me take a sip right here. The Great Wall, it's not Chinese. But it's called the Great Wall of China. I don't know if we're ready for this. Is this illegal information? <laughs> Every 5,280 feet on the Great Wall of China, there's another resupply station. Does that sound like anything to us in the West? 5,280 feet? That's a mile. I thought they used the metric system over there. There's big speculation going on that the Great Wall of China was actually built by the Romans. A Roman peed is 5,280 miles. So it's uh, it's not looking good, China. Tell us the truth. Moving on. <laughs> A new website reports on the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community. I gotta see this. <laughs> Imagine buying an expensive electric vehicle that has internet connectivity but decides to disable it. That's what a business is doing for an ultra-Orthodox Jew who owns Teslas in order to ensure that the drivers and their passengers don't see anything on the internet considered immodest. What the fuck? 
So in order to block porn on your Tesla, you're going to let them have the power to turn off your Tesla mid-driving? I don't see anything logically wrong with that. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. I need a breath. That story just put me in bad vibe mode. Since the day I was born, I was an outlaw otter. Getting sped on by Hank the Tank. Jewish people own Teslas. <laughs> no. Should we check a new website? Yeah, we're moving on. Oh no, it's going to make me go back through everything. That was all NPR. Give me a minute here. AP News is next. I have a soundboard button here that I didn't name. Let's see what it is. It's nothing. My bad. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Son, where'd you find this? AP News. If I can hold my telephone. China authorities arrest two for smashing shortcut through the Great Wall. So more Chinese wall. <laughs> Fish with a funny float gets a CT scan at the Denver Zoo. I've been there. Gotta check this article out. The aquarium is minimal at Denver, but the zoo, pretty good. A fancy-looking French angelfish that was found one day with a funny float had its buoyancy back after taking some time in the tropical trappings to get a CT scan. <laughs> We're CT scanning fish, and there's people lined up at the hospital who get rejected because they don't have health care. Kill the fish, kill the old lady. Collect the insurance. Another one bites the dust. did do do, do. Another girl touched my nuts. The diagnosis, too much gas, enteritis or inflamed intestines had resulted in increased internal gas that was an, an advertisement popped up. This fish was gassy. Me too. I've been cooking a lot of beans. I got them bean fiend farts. This is insane. If you think about it that way, we are giving CT scans to fish. Throw it out and get a new one. Moving on. Police stop Nebraska man for bucking the law with a bull riding shotgun in his car. This is one you kind of have to see. It's not even a big car. It's like a Chevy Cruze. And he cut the top off of it. And there's this 4,000 pound bull he's riding with. It's got the long horns. It's going off the side of the road. It's the, one of the funniest videos out there. Revelers hurl tomatoes at each other and street awash in red pulp in Spanish Town's Tomatina Party. Yo, I'm booking a ticket. Let's check out the Tomatina Party. There's a picture of a lady bathing in... What the hell? Yeah, she's bathing in tomato paste, and now they have a truck. Picture an 18-wheeler, but the back of it is just full of tomato paste. This looks awesome. What town is this in? Reading. Buñol, Spain. Some 15,000 people, including many tourists, pasted each other with tomatoes Wednesday as Spain's annual Tomatina street battle took place. Let's go. It looks like <laughs> how Indian people, they have holy, where they throw all the colored dye at each other. There's pictures of people throwing tomatoes at each other. Let's go! And I'm not totally in on this. They have towns in Italy where one day a year, you're allowed to fight anybody you want. <laughs> this is fucking awesome. So again, it's kind of being dumbed down to, hey, you peons, throw tomatoes at each other. It's looking like people are getting hurt, though, in the middle of it. <laughs> in the middle of the tomato brawl, I just start throwing punches. It's like a goddamn Angel of Death concert or something. I was looking for a soundboard. Tomatillo, Buño, Spain. August 30th, they have that annual event. Check it out. Let's see other biggest news stories of the year. Obscure stories. 
like like Snoop Dogg's living room. Smell of pot wafts over U.S. court open. We heard about that. Longest alligator in Mississippi history captured. Dude, this thing is huge. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh my lord. Four state residents, Donald Woods, Will Thomas, Joey Clark, Painter White, harvested a male alligator Saturday in West Mississippi Sunflow River. It weighed 802 pounds and measured 14 feet long. Yikes. I don't know if I could fuck around with the South, bro. They got alligators. <laughs> Pretty cool. What's next? Chicago TV News crew robbed at gunpoint while reporting on a string of robberies. Very good. I took a mass media communication was my major in school. I got to take one class where they let us inside the studio. And they contracted a guy from ABS to come and teach us. And he showed us one of the news trucks. Bro, they're riding around with at least $100,000 worth of gear. If I was in a gang, I would get my otter friend to rob a news truck. The outlaw otter. Neurosurgeon investigates patient's mystery symptoms, plucking worms from a woman's brain in Australia. No, 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 no. Squidward on a chair. That's a good one. Squidward on a chair. <laughs> Squid one on a chair. <laughs> All right, so this uh I don't want to gross everybody out, but this lady with worms in her brain. I've been watching way too many videos about diet and people having like 2 foot long worms in their stomach. And you probably noticed in some of the past episodes if you're still listening that I've been talking about cleaner health diets. The meat is tainted. I don't want to go any further. Moving on. NYPD warns it has zero tolerance for drones at the U.S. Open. No weed, no drones. There's no fun. Competitors get down and dirty at Britain's Bog Snorkeling Championship. Bog gets striked for that. Sandstorm. Riders in various states of Andrews Cruz Philadelphia a guy was riding a bike naked in Philadelphia. Is that news? There's like a thousand people overdosing on heroin in that city. Hot air balloon lands on Vermont's highway medium after being stalled in flight. Isn't that what hot air balloons do? They stall? Nah, stalling in terms of flying means you're not creating lift anymore. Hot air balloons, pretty fucking dope. You see, you're supposed to spend like five minutes on a news story to be funny, apparently, but rapid fire news. From tarantulas to tigers, the animals at London Zoo step onto the scales for their annual weigh-in. All right, British animals, let's feel this one out. Staff at London Zoo got the measure of giant gorillas, plump penguins, and skinny stick insects at the zoo's annual animal weigh-in on Thursday. Zookeepers tempted... Squirrel monkeys onto scales with treats. Totted up tarantulas used curry-scented measuring sticks to coax Sumatra tigers to stretch out. What's that girl? I think she's called like Safari Sammy on YouTube. Hot chick. She goes into tiger cages. Give it a look. Staff at the zoo, which is home to some 14,000 animals, will take several days to weigh and measure every mammal, bird, reptile, fish, and invertebrate in its crate. The results go into a database that is shared with zoos around the world. Whoa. They have a picture of a tiger, and they're only two feet tall. Yo, I could take a Sumatran tiger, especially if he's British. Oi, bloke, I'm gonna eat your hindquarters. You're only two foot tall, bitch. Psych. I'm not <laughs> Who's that guy? One of those comedians in the mainstream He says he could kill a wolf How about you fight a tiger like a real man? A meerkat is weighed Oh, Yo <laughs> The pictures 
moving on. Norway is rebuilding a reindeer fence at the border to stop the animal's costly stroll into Russia. Reindeer into Russia? We will employ you through Kremlin to bring children coal on Christmas. Russian reindeer? Russian reindeer. <laughs> I'm scratching my forehead right now. I gotta do another 20 minutes of animal voices in different languages. <laughs> Copenhagen, Denmark, Norway is rebuilding a dilapidated reindeer fence along its border with Russia in the Arctic stop to animals from wandering into the neighbored country. We gotta get these animals some passports. Let's document these animals. <laughs> Norwegian officials said Thursday that so far this year, 42 reindeer have crossed into Russia. <gasps> oh no! They're grazing off of Russia's grass. This is an international issue. Let's start a war over it. So they're building a fence that costs $3.7 million. Excuse me? There are plenty of contractors that could get that done for cheaper. But to stop 60 reindeer, we need a $4 million fence. It's like when they were talking about the wall, Trump was saying it's going to cost $10 billion. I don't think people understand how minimal that number is. And again, I don't give a fuck about walls. This isn't political. <laughs> Someone's getting mad because I just said the T word. You know what we could do with $10 billion? They actually did the math. You could solve homeless. And then you could start homeless again. Kick them all out of the shelters. And then you could cure homeless. And then kick them out again. You could cure homeless three times with ten billion dollars but instead we're gonna build fences for reindeers <laughs> deep sea i almost fell deep sea hot tubs help hot octopus moms hatch their eggs faster damn so octopuses are living in hot tubs not bad try and get some of that octo pussy <laughs> Octo Pussy Oops. They say those Asians are into octopus porn. <laughs> I've kind of been looking into that too. The dudes because I haven't been on the wank, so I'm just looking into what wankers get into what categories. Uh yeah, like Japanese do look into that octopus thing, but it's because they outlawed penises in porn, so the way to get around it is that you portray women having sex with octopuses. FBI, open up! Not sure how that's a good alternative. But apparently, Silicon Valley has the freakiest porn searches. Because those guys don't even... They see women as, like, utilities. Those friggin' nerds who program computers, so they're looking up, like... Vor in the craziest shit out there. Moving on. T-Rex's race to photo finish at Washington State Track. <laughs> you know those T-Rex suits? They held a race in Seattle where 200 dudes in dinosaur suits did a race. I'd rather go to Tomatia Town. Hold up. I need a Fortnite drop. <laughs> Tomato Town over in Bugno, France. Oigi Goigas, porn. All right, now we're all caught up. Connecticut kitten mystery solved. <clears throat> Hard-hitting journalism. Cat found in stolen crashed car belongs to a suspect. Damn, this cat is a rat. They're tracing his collar back to the criminal. No! Dogs, they do drug sniffing at airports. When cops ask, ask cats to fucking, I don't know. Are you challenging me? Wasn't worth the joke. <laughs> so these news articles are funnier than jokes. Journalism might be dead. It's all comedy now. A large ice chunk fell from the sky and damaged a house in Mass. How is that news? It's called hail. Fresh look at DNA from Utsi, the Iceman, traces his roots to present-day Turkey. Well, the missing link, I guess we found it. Let's move on. This was AP. 
now we shall look at nearer Huffington Post. That's somewhat reputable. Let's see what odd news they had for the year. Traffickers plead guilty to smuggling endangered sea cucumbers. Illegal cucumbers from the sea. Wildlife traffickers pleaded guilty this week in federal court in California to illegally importing endangered sea cucumbers, which are prized in China for food and medicine as a reputed aphrodisiac. And they found all these sea cucumbers in Mexico. Hmm. I was just talking about the wall. They're saying that some of the biggest human traffickers right now are Chinese, the whatever their gang was called. But that's pretty insane. You think it's like the Mexican gang butchering the story. Sea cucumbers. $10,000 a cucumber if you get caught with them. Okay. Huffington Post. I like them big. I like them chunky. I gotta pee so bad. But that's just because I'm bombing right now. Texan wrangle Willie the rodeo goat following wild weeks long chase. <laughs> Not into that one. A new millipede species is crawling under LA. It's blind, gassy, and has 486 legs. Not much of a millipede then. Check out my new shoes. There's a brand new... One, two, buckle my shoes. That just raped my ears. The city of Los Angeles, a metropolis of freeways and traffic, has a newly discovered species naming its honor. The Los Angeles Thread Millipede. The tiny arthropod was found just underground by naturalists at Southern California hiking area, near a freeway, a Starbucks, and a walk leg sunglasses store. That's what Starbucks should do. Start putting millipedes into their drinks. About the length of a paperclip, but skinny as a pencil head, its translucent, sinuous, jellyfish-like tentacle creature burrows four inches below the ground, secreting unusual chemicals. It is blind, relying on horn-like antennas protruding from its head to find its way around. It's amazing to think these millipedes are crawling in the inner cracks and crevices of our butt cheeks. Butt cheek joke, too easy. But it was perfect. Had to take the shot. Millipedes. It's pretty weird. There's no millipedes in Colorado, but those things are all over the East Coast. Moving on. Georgia's big peanut returns to roadside after hurricane felled. So the you know, not a good story. <laughs> Annual Ernest Hemingway Lookalike Contest begins in Florida Keys. Wow, this is creepy. There's a bunch of old guys with white beards and white hair who look like Ernest Hemingway. And it looks like they slam pie in each other's face. Key lime pie, because it's the Key West. Happy, happy, happy. Key West, that's a place I'd like to visit. There's no fucking books. There's no fucking Arthur Schopenhauer on Key West. It's all about vibes. Key West. The West is the best. Mammals may have hunted down. That's a gay story. Come on, we need a strong ender here. An ender dragon. Burger King serving all cheeseburger in Thailand. Oh, God. Burger King's new dish in Thailand is causing a bit of a meltdown for foodies. The fast food joint seemed to abandon its have-it-your-way motto when it debuted a totally cheeseburger. 
This is no joke. This is for real, the brand wrote, according to Facebook's translation. The post showed off a melty 20 slices of American cheese. Ew. Ew. The bees churger has been born. That stinks. It only costs three dollars and ten cents. <laughs> what about the grimace shake? Your dumb grimace shake turned my face purple. There was also the I think they did a Barbie shake. It was a a pink milkshake. It's not as cute when your piss is pink. Moving on, Burger King. The cheesinator. <laughs> Atlantan man attempts to rob nail salon. Gets ignored by everyone. Hmm. I've been noticing that. You go to get your hair cut by a chick. You should try this in your head. Start a timer until they ask you what your job is. Women cannot help themselves, especially at the salon. And as soon as they find out that you don't have a real job, they stop asking questions. So now I just go in, say that I'm a septic tank cleaner, and then that's about that. The cannabis industry wants to turn July 10th into a hash holiday. Man, fucking oil day. Let's see what they're going to say about the Snoky resin, man. Now that recreational pot, and we got an ad. Recreational pot has been legalized in 23 states, man. The cannabis industry is borrowing a marketing trick from the booze industry. Hangover holidays. Hell yeah. Most people are aware that marijuana buffs celebrate each 420 and the day before Thanksgiving, a.k.a. Weed Wednesday. What? What? How did I not know about Weed Wednesday? <laughs> so now we got Weed Wednesday, 420, and Oil Day. Three weed holidays. Can we get a month for white people, or is that still racist? <laughs> but Monday, July 10th, marks another lesser-known holodank for cannabis consumers. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Holodank. <laughs> the name of the holiday might seem obscure, but Lauren Forstein, a co-founder of the artistry of California-based Yada Yada, in cannabis culture, the number 710 is an inside joke for oil. By inverting the letters and turning them up, we know. Some sources say 710 was created in 2011 by rapper Tazarok. Damn, I learned something new. Currently, the popularity of 710 is limited to those at the nexus of the sincerity and obsession of commonly found people who are super into weed and commercialism. That's where I was getting with this. Holidays In the Christmas season, you have to spend money to be part of a culture. Or you just get a snook on that, that popcorn man that shake and you're in the club, dude. Weed. Long overdue book returned to Massachusetts Library was 119 years late. <laughs> Must have been a good book. Let's see what it was. On February 14th, 1904, someone curious about the emerging possibilities of a key force of nature checked out James Clerk Maxwell's An Elementary Treatise on Electricity. Bro, this guy was building a fucking Tesla tower off the grid. <laughs> Kept it for a hundred years. Sloppenheimer just told us, if you get a good book, read it twice. I would read that electricity shit. Someone recommended to me Ken Wheeler. I don't know if you could say that name. Fuck. That guy knows how to build technology. And I think we're over the hour mark at this point. So if you want to learn how to build a Tesla tower, that guy also sells land. But you might get killed. I think we're going to end it there. The Nick is I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys. I'm doing it for you. I wouldn't have just talked about animal news stories for half an hour. Here to try to start the community. So I probably should remember who recommended Theoria Apotheosis to me. But I love doing this. I love the, what is it, a community building aspect more than just speaking shit at this point. So yeah, hopefully we're entertaining. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Nick Muniz, signing off. Peace!